a video of uh, this series where I want to show you the coronary arteries in health and disease right from the fetal circulation to the adult circulation. I am going to focus a bit on the fetal circulation in this video. Uh, yes sir, this is a good idea to subscribe the channel so that whenever I uh, notify or post anything there, you would be immediately notified and uh, you can look at uh, the video in case you like it. I am going to discuss about a Kawasaki disease here. Uh, it's not uh, uh, going to discuss in a full because it's a, it's a chapter in itself. Uh, Kawasaki disease is a disease where you have a fever lasting for more than five days and you have various other cutaneous manifestations which include uh, a rash which includes conjunctivitis and oral rash or you have an erythema of the hand and feet with scaling and there are other uh, you know areas of lymphadenopathy but what we have, as a cardiologist are interested in is the dilatation of the coronary arteries producing a diffuse dilatation, ectasias or uh, different types of aneurysms which could be fusiform or which could be uh, secular in nature. So these are very important because 20% of the patients with the Kawasaki disease which happens in usually less than 5 years of age can cause a coronary artery dilatation and the coronary artery dilatation has a very important prognostic bearing because of reasons of having a coronary artery thrombosis ca causing a myocardial infarction and ischemia at a very young age so it has a catastrophic outlook so it's very very important if we suspect coronary kawasaki disease we should look at the coronaries good idea to look at the coronaries at uh, uh, you know first week or two within two weeks of the the disease onset and only 80 percent of the cases are picked up at this time uh, but 20 percent would be picked up later because aneurysms take many a times take a longer time to form so it's a good idea to repeat in case you don't see coronary artery aneurysm now after about a month or so so that the coronary artery aneurysm they tend to last long they tend to last till the adulthood and these patients would require an antiplatelet therapy uh, you can have an absolute increase in the diameter if it is more than three uh, uh, this i am going to discuss it in subsequent one where you can use a z-score for analysis uh, that's uh, the guidelines which were given in last year uh, for a uh, post uh, uh, kawasaki uh, coronary artery disease sequelae in the coronary artery disease you have to see if there are remaining uh, 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 aneurysms then you use the z score or a pragmatic method for assessing and you follow up these patients uh, regularly these are the various z score methods which you can utilize uh, according to your population and uh, there is a kind of uh, one resource which you can use for the z score calculation of the coronary artery other one is the parameters which is dot blog dot com that also is an important uh, uh, resource for uh, z scores in pediatric circulation and coronary arteries if you use the z-score which then the z-score less than 2 is all right then if it is between 2 to 2.5 of the z-score of the normal size it's dilatation but if it is more than 10 the z-score the deviation is very high the dilatation and this is a, a giant aneurysm but many a times if you don't want to use the z-score it's a good idea to compare the dilatation if it is focal with the with the uh, adjacent segment or a proximal segment if you have more than 1.5 segment uh, dilatation less than 1.5 dilatation is okay so if you have more than 30 percent dilatation of the coronary artery segment you can call it aneurysm and if it is four times the normal size it's called a giant aneurysm which can actually uh, rupture or produce a thrombosis is very very important so in the Kawasaki disease, I show you one patient where there is a dilatation of the right coronary artery. You see this is the right coronary artery arising from uh, the aorta, the right coronary, uh, right sinus of Valsalva. And then you see this is uh, the right coronary artery again. Uh, there are branches of the right coronary artery and both are 
showing a marked uh, dilatation there is marked dilatation of the left circulation also this left main this is LED both are markedly dilated and that's uh, the uh, circumflex is also dilated so there is dilatation of all proximal segments of the coronary artery in this patient you take the measurement and then you use a z-score or pragmatic score to make an assessment that is this a dilatation of the coronary artery or not common coronary artery dilatation would happen uh, in about 25 percent patients in a proximal segment of uh, left main it can be circumflex rca if you have an proximal rca left main and circumflex they count for about 60 percent of the aneurysm fortunately the aneurysms happen less frequently distally which are obviously very difficult to pick up on echocardiography the, now in the fetal circulation you can also have a prominent coronary artery if you see coronary arteries that means they are dilated if you see the flow in the coronary arteries in the fetus that means they are dilated normal coronary arteries are not seen uh, now why do we have a prominent coronary artery whenever there is a stress on the heart whenever there is right ventricular overload or a left ventricular overload or there is a situation of hypoxemia caused by uh, growth retardation or placental insufficiency you have a hypoxemia in the in the blood then this hypoxia actually leads to coronary autoregulation there are three circulations where the blood distribution is altered in hypoxemia one is the heart and other two are brain and adrenals so adrenals also enlarge in hypo uh, in hypoxemia so coronary artery flows because of the extraction of the coronary artery flow because extraction uh, is less in the coronary artery because already you have a less oxygen tension in the arterial circulation there and you have no margin of extracting more oxygen uh, in case there is hypoxia which actually happens in neonates in the fetal circulation you are left with no choice than to dilate the coronary arteries in response to hypoxemia so if the coronary arteries are dilated and they are dilated big now you can see the coronary artery dilated uh, to orient you this is the right ventricle left ventricle and that's in the neota that's an aortic valve you see this is a uh, left coronary artery the blood flow going in other direction that is blue and the right coronary artery which is uh, coming towards the transducer is quite big in size about third the size of the aorta again in this patient you see a right coronary artery prominent and prominent coronary artery indicates something stressful is happening to the fetus the primary coronary artery the other reason could be that there is an obstruction to lv or an rv outflow and then the coronary arteries are actually uh, letting the blood from that chamber left or right go through the collaterals and the coronary artery into the aorta so this is a reverse order flow in the coronary artery from that chamber into the aorta this is a egress of the chamber where it has nowhere to go so now this is one situation now this is the case diagram what you see you have a hypoplastic left heart there is some bit of lv inflow in case there is the mitral valve is not atratic there is a bit of flow into the left ventricle either it can go back by uh, mitral regurgitation in case the valve is competent it builds up pressure in the left ventricle opens up collaterals and these collaterals are actually cor coronary cameral fistulas from this fistulas circulation the blood actually goes in a reverse direction into the coronary artery and into the aorta you see this example and that's the to orient you right atrium right ventricle interventricle septum and that's a globular left ventricle which is hardly contracting and there is endomyocardial fibroelastosis a shiny stuff and this is typical of hypoplastic left heart syndrome you see a small inflow signal but more than that you see the coronary artery which are going away from the lv actually this is an egress of lv which uh, takes the blood from uh, the left ventricle to aorta in a retrograde fashion 
passing through the coronary arteries. Now let me show you a patient with the left hypoplastic left heart syndrome which we did recently hypoplastic left hardly any flow into the left ventricle you have predominant flow the right uh, circulation and then the next video what you see is that the pulmonary artery uh, uh, because there was no anti-grade flow in the aorta there is a retrograde flow in the aorta from uh, the pulmonary artery and ductus arteriosus in a, what we have in a specific view in the fetus called a three vessel trachea view and that's how if you come to the left ventricle side you see multiple these channels which uh, take the blood from the left ventricle into the aorta so i always when i make a presentation i read about it and i am always humbled by understanding i have yet to learn a lot uh, thank you very much but uh, good idea to subscribe the channel so that you are notified as and when you see any new video bye till then